you know, it's being framed even, you know, upon independent media. You know, there's some people that claim that the multipolarity model is better because it's more inclusive and more countries have a voice. But ultimately, um, the same 2030 agenda or Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals embraced by the EU and the Biden administration, what have you, are also embraced by the BRICS countries that are supposed to represent a challenge to the Western order. So maybe there's a few more seats at the table under the multipolar world order, but in terms of the world that will come in uh, through it, it's the same as if the unipolar world order continues uh, on its way, essentially. Larry Fink is in this group too, and he doesn't, I mean, to think that he wants to make a more inclusive world is insane. He's interested in increasing the amount of assets that BlackRock manages and pretty much only that. Whitney Webb, a renowned researcher and journalist, is cautious about tokenization of every asset. As few days ago, Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager with $10 trillion in assets, said that tokenization will be the next generation for markets after the approval of its Bitcoin ETF. IBIT by SEC on January 11th, 2024. We will now bring you clips from the interview. But before we do, please help us reach more viewers by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it with others, and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. The sustainable development goals have been developed essentially by bankers. Um, you could describe it, or I would describe it as a, a global Wall Street coup, essentially. But you know, transnational finance. Um, it's it's a. I mean, you have people like Mark Carney, former Goldman Sachs, former head of Bank of England, Bank of Canada, Financial Stability Board, a aider and a better mm -hmm. of HSBC's uh, money laundering for drug cartels. He's the person mm -hmm. that's in charge of climate action for the United Nations. Um, there are other points man is Mike Bloomberg, former Solomon Brothers, former mayor of New York, uh, billionaire guy. And if you think these people care about the environment and sustainable development and building a more inclusive world, um, I, I'm sorry, but you have been had. So these are the people that are essentially behind a lot of the net zero plans, behind a lot of the other SDG plans that essentially move us from a, a, the model you know, the free market capitalist model into more this this technocratic model where, you know, uh, every commodity, everything is going to be tokenized. And you've seen Larry Fink in the past couple of days uh, be very open about that uh, following the approval of the uh, BlackRock's Bit uh, Bitcoin ETF, for example, talking about the tokenization revolution and all of this. It, but there's an effort here to do to take this, you know, much farther than it's ever been taken before and to essentially just not uh, not just tokenize, you know, existing assets or traditional assets, um, but also create new asset classes like natural assets, all these natural asset corporations that have sort of been in the news lately and have sort of, you know, received some pushback. But there's definitely a lot of efforts underway to essentially uh, tokenize the whole planet, increase the amount of uh assets in the existing economy by being like, now this lake is an asset. Now this, uh, this forest is an asset and all of this stuff tokenize, fractionalize it and, you know, basically create this insane new, uh, financial system that's different than previous financial systems, but everything, including nature and humans will be tokenized and traded like financial products. And that's essentially what a lot of this is, uh, leading to, and you have most of the countries on the world, those that are pursuing Agenda 2030, essentially leading us uh, into that. And so, you know, at some level, I think the geopolitical push and pull uh, between, you know, BRICS and, and the West is real. Uh, but I think, you know, at the higher levels, they ultimately agree um, on the goals. So I don't really think... Um, you know, one is necessarily a, a true effective challenge to the other. And if you're against the ambitions of the SDGs and Agenda 2030, um, then you should be against them, regardless of if they're being championed by Russia and China or the United States and the EU. Ultimately, it leads us to the same place. Um, and um, it, which is going to financialize and, and tokenize everything, but also surveil everything to an unprecedented extent. Um, and in, mm -hmm. increasingly uses, uh, d you know, debt slavery, uh, you know, the uh, Mark Carney and, and Fink and all of these guys um, under the auspices of the UN talked about reimagining the World Bank and the IMF, all the multilateral development banks uh, for the purpose of basically using debt to finance the SDGs and doing all these things like debt for climate swaps, debt for nature swaps, uh, which are essentially, you know, land grabs and, and all sorts of things, uh, framing it as, you know, necessary to save the planet. Whitney Webb further discusses about the upcoming U.S. elections, the agenda for CBDC and digital ID, 
a program by the World Food Program, WFP, in partnership with the United Nations to introduce an innovative iris scan payment system, allowing refugees to purchase food from camp supermarkets using a scan of their eye instead of cash, vouchers, or e-cards. Let's get back to Whitney's interview as she reveals more disturbing plans about the elite's grand plan for your money. And maybe that justification works for the left, but I think it would be naive to assume that they aren't going to retool um, the talking points to appeal to the right. Um, I think that's definitely going to be happening. And if you look at Fink himself, you know, he's gone. He's tried to go away from being the point man for ESG and all of this towards a guy that's saying, like, look how profitable this is going to be for us. And you can have a part of the uh, the riches by tokenizing your land and putting it on this platform where it can be traded and and whatever. Like you can have a piece of of all this wealth and and whatever. I think that's how they're going to try and um. And, and frame it. And I think people need to be very, uh, very aware because, you know, the efforts to manipulate us to acquiesce to the system um, are unprecedented. And I think ultimately, if you have a good grasp of what they want to enact on the global stage, regardless of the justifications or the political figures they use or influencers and media that they try to use to sell this to you, if you are firm in your opposition to these agendas, uh, then you'll be able to sort through the nonsense because, as you said, uh, you know all the stuff coming out online is increasingly uh, it just so psyop after psyop after psyop, and you mm-hmm. know it's hard to know who who to trust and who to believe, what have you. But if you know that the end goal uh, is is global governance, mass surveillance, the end of privacy, all of that, you can look at who is pushing those agendas and say no. And ultimately, at the end of the day. You have to say no, you have to know what your red lines are, and you have to make it about trusting your red lines and trusting where you stand, not so much trusting this political savior or that political savior or this media influencer, which I think a lot of people um, have been doing. And I think it's definitely time for another model, particularly when it comes to U.S. presidential politics, because how many times can we vote for the lesser of two evils and have a good outcome? You know, it's just it's never happened and it's not going to keep happening. And, you know, all this um, all of these efforts, you know, in the case of Trump to like explain away um, his decisions last time and act like it's going to be different this time. We can't wait to see what's going to happen this time. The situation has come to a head arguably already, and it's up to people to find local solutions um, and build something with their communities that will help them protect, you know, help everyone in that community protect themselves against all these stressors and crises that are to come. Uh, because waiting for the right guy to get in the White House, regardless of who he is and whatever intention and motivation he has, one guy in the White House is not going to solve all of this because arguably, you know, the president is really a figurehead because at this point, the U.S. is so bureaucratic and massive. It doesn't really matter who gets elected, you know, every four years in a, in a November. Uh, the agenda is going to continue. Um, and I think people need to really get wise about that. And particularly now where, you know, presidential politics is pushed to the forefront of both mainstream and independent media, um, you know, it's increasing. It, it really has been for some time a circus at the end of the day. And I think we should be paying attention to these really real issues and uh, increasingly focus on solutions, which I think, you know, finds very little uh, airtime and in independent media these days, which I think is uh, definitely a trend I'd like to see uh, reversed because it's definitely time to start building something parallel to this Agenda 2030 stuff. It's a lot of the way this digital ID stuff, CBDCs or their private sector equivalents are going to be forced onto the people is when, uh, you know, the food supply is un- under attack or, you know, there's some sort of crisis there. And the only way to get your rations is to uh, follow the same model that's been rolled out by the UN's World food program, which is essentially the same model by uh, produced by Sam Altman's world coin, Uh, scan your eyeball and you have a digital ID tied to your eyeball and a digital wallet. And every time you check out, you scan your eyeball at the cash register and it deducts um, the money of uh, the cost of what you purchased uh, from your, you know, rations wallet. And if you don't submit to that system, you don't eat. And they, the World Food Program does this to millions of refugees every day uh, in Ukraine and the Middle East and elsewhere. And the plan is to have this happen essentially uh, everywhere. So yep. people need to be very vigilant. Concerns arise with centralized digital currencies, CBDCs, particularly those issued by central banks as they pose potential threats of control and manipulation affecting the general population. What are your thoughts on Whitney's interview? 
please drop your comments and observations in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.